Happy Thursday, everybody. This is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church, part 52, and I'm calling this, I'm staying with what works, and if it isn't broke, don't fix it. You know, for me, church works for me. Church works for me, God works for me. Hey, Aunt Baby Sis, glad to see you. And a lot of times in life, we, we tend to get fancy. We wanna try new things, we want to reinvent the wheel. But the reason why cars still have wheels is because the wheel worked. The wheel worked, so why, why re reinvent it? So I call on Jesus because that's the name that saved me. Hey, Dominique. Um, so that's why I call on Jesus. When I was in trouble, I didn't call on Buddha. I didn't call on Allah. I didn't call on Gandhi. I called on Jesus. Now, some would argue that there was no J, so it's Yeshua. I didn't call on Yeshua. I called on Jesus. So I continue to study and read because that's the name that I called on when I was in trouble. When you go and actually dive into the word, the children of Israel went through a lot of different um, experiences based on their disbelief, based on their commonness with God. So the children of Israel, you know, they were subjugated un in, in, under Pharaoh and they were in slavery. But while they were in slavery, while they were in bondage, while they were being told what they could and could not do, they were being fed three square meals a day. I'm just using that. I don't know because it didn't say how many times a day they were fed, but for sake of this discussion, I'm gonna say they were fed three square meals a day. And when Moses came and said, you know, let my people go, and Pharaoh eventually let them go, they were in the wilderness. And there was a time when they said, you know, Moses, did you bring us out here to die? We were better off in slavery. What's amazing is that while they were in the wilderness, they were fed every day and every night. There actually was a, you know, a cloud in the day and a, <laughs> and a, and a and fire at night to sustain them every day. But somehow they have forgot what worked. They have forgot that they were in bondage. They had forgot that they were getting their butt whipped every day. They had forgotten that they weren't being valued. They had forgotten that they weren't getting paid their fair wage. They had forgotten that their children was being separated from them. Somehow, some way, when God made them free, they forgot. So I continue to read, I continue to study because I don't ever want to forget. I want to stay with what works. I'm a miracle baby. My mother was told um, that she wasn't going to be able to have any children. And I am the last of three. And when I was born, you know, I, I was a blue baby because I was suffering from lack of oxygen. But when my mom called on the name of Jesus, first to produce me, second to save me, that's the name that worked for me. And as I reflect through my life when I was a child and I was held up at gunpoint as a kindergartner, I called on the name of Jesus and that's the name that saved me. And when I was in elementary school and I had my middle finger cut off, yes, cut off, the tip of my finger was cut off. And they said that I would never be able to have that finger. I called on the name of Jesus and that was the name that saved me. I have full use of that finger today, even though they said that I would never have use of that finger. I have use of that finger. When I was told in college that I would never be able to walk or run and that I needed to have surgery on both of my ankles, I went in my prayer closet and I called on the name of Jesus. And I never had to have that surgery. And I was able to run. So I go to church because I stay with what works. 
when I was in my car accident and I was rear ended and I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. I called on the name of Jesus and he saved me when I was out employment and I didn't know where and how we were going to make ends meet. I called on the name of Jesus and that's the name that saved me. I don't want to be like the children of Israel and forget what is and who is actually keeping me. What is, who is actually sustaining me. Many times we get complacent or we get common, probably is a better word, with, what, with God's grace. Many times we begin to complain because, wow, I'm in this house and I see somebody with a better house. And that you forget that there's somebody with no house. Sometimes we get so common because we're like, I'm in this car and I don't like this car because I see someone else with a better car. And you forget that there is somebody with a bicycle. Sometimes you forget I'm in my body and I'm riddled with pain. I can barely walk. When it gets up in the morning, I got to get, you know, what I call that oil to get these old legs walking. And you forget that somebody that can't feel their legs. Sometimes I hit 40 and my vision begin to change. And I'm like, I don't see the way I used to. Sometimes you forget that there's somebody that doesn't have the ability to see. So I go to church to stay grounded because it's the thing that sustains me. It's the things that is keep keeping me. I thank God for my ability to feel. I thank God for my ability to see, but I know that it is not on my own, but it is God that is sustaining me. So I'm going to stay with what works. I'm going to keep calling on the man that I called on every time when I was in trouble. I didn't call on other things. So I don't know if those other gods help. So those other gods are helping you and those other names that you use to call on are helping you. I don't, I'm not going to hate on you, but I haven't tried those other gods. I haven't tried those other names. Those names didn't come to rescue me when I couldn't sleep at night. That wasn't the name that I called on when I was tossing and turning. That wasn't the name that I called on when I was driving in my car and something said, drive over that bridge. You don't deserve to live. You should just drive over that bridge right now. You don't deserve to live. I called on Jesus. So I continue to go to church because that is the name that saved me. When I lost and I thought that I could never love again, I called on Jesus. I didn't call on any other name. So when my body was riddled with pain, when I had my hip surgery, and they said that you're going to have to have this hip replaced in a few years, I called on the name of Jesus, and that's the name that saved me. When I had to have emergency and biblical surgery because of the pain that I was having, and they said, no, you need to have emergency surgery, but you have another issue. So we're going to pray that your intestines don't go out and make your body toxic. You know who I called on? I called on the name of Jesus, and that's the name that saved me. There's a common theme to this message today, is that I stay with what works. I call on the man that saved me. When my sister was pronounced dead and she laid on that table and heart not breathing, breathing, beating. We called on the name of Jesus and that's the name that resurrected her. So I call on the name of Jesus because that's the name that saved me. That's the name that my mama called on to birth me. That's the name that I called on to get my finger back. That's the name that we prayed on to bring my sister back to life, who was declared dead for over an hour. That's the type of God I serve. I don't know what type of God you serve. So I'm not saying that Buddha don't work. I just ain't never tried it. And I'm reminded of a story in the Bible about David and the armor. See, some think that David didn't want to use the armor because the armor didn't fit. 
That's what most people think. That the armor wasn't tested. I truly believe that. But you know what I also think? That man wanted David to use his armor because the king had an armor that said that he was the king. So if someone saw David in the armor, they would think that it was the king that killed Goliath because the armor signified who was the king. The armor was made with certain requirements. The armor was made with certain markings. So if David used the armor, they wouldn't think that it was David that killed the ki killed Goliath. They would think that it was the king, Saul, that killed Goliath. So I don't call on any other God. I don't use any other armor. I don't pray to any deity because I don't want any other God thinking that they have credit for the blessings that are on my life. I don't want any other God, any other person, any other thing to think that they are the one that saved me. I don't want anybody else to think that that's the reason that I smile today. I don't want anybody else to think or get it misconstrued that something else saved me. I don't want anybody else to think the reason that I can stand is because some other God. I go to church because this is the name that I called on every time that I was in trouble. And that name saved me. When I thought that I couldn't go on, I remember there was a time I, I was in college and I was on an engineering scholarship. And I, I, I did very well through high school. And it got to a point that I was not doing well in college. And I got a letter from my dean and they said, listen, you're not cutting the mustard. And if you don't pull your grades up, you're gonna lose your scholarship. And you're not gonna be able to attend this school anymore. I didn't call on my mother. I didn't call on my father. I called on Jesus. I actually sat down and said, God, I don't know what to study. I don't know why I am struggling, but I'm gonna need for you to guide me. I'm gonna need for you to lead me. I'm gonna need for you to direct me because I don't wanna go back home and live with my mama. I don't wanna be a disappointment to my parents. And guess what? From that moment on, I had a 3.2 GPA. So I go to church and I call on Jesus because it works for me. And even to get to college, I made a vow to my mother that she would never have to pay one cent for me to go to college. And guess what? She never had to pay one cent because I called on the name of Jesus and he's the one that helped me to get up in the morning to study, to help me to make it through those years of school. So I go to church because I serve a mighty God. I serve a sustaining God. I serve a keeping God. I serve a God that keeps families together. I serve a God that produces miracles. Yes, miracles. My father was only given three months to live. And I'll never forget that day because I was in the hospital. And I looked my dad in the eye and I said, you will live as long as you want to live if you have the faith to do so. He lived three years and five months. So why wouldn't I call on the name that sustained his life? I, I just call on the name that saved me. I just call on the name that saved me. I go to church because I call on the name that saved me. Literally saved me. And I remember when I was having really bad migraines and I was getting what they call cluster migraines. These migraines would come out of the blue and I wouldn't just get one migraine. I would get one, two, three, four migraines back to back. And I would get migraines back to back. And the migraines that I had would actually cause what they call vertigo symptoms. So when I would suffer with these migraines, 
I would literally lose all of my equilibrium and I was unable to stand. I would be fine one minute and I would just break out in sweats and I would get really, really, really dizzy and I would have to lay down. And they told me that this is something that I'm gonna have to deal with for the rest of my life. They said, you're gonna have to keep, you know, this Imitrex with you because this Imitrex is what you're gonna need to break open sorta of, in case of emergency. And I was at my job one day and I, I had an episode and they, they rushed me to the hospital. And they, so they did all of these tests to see if I was having some type of neurological condition. And the doctor said, we don't know exactly what is going on neurologically, but we definitely know that when you get these migraines, you're gonna be down for the count. I had a few more episodes. And then I said, God, no more episodes. I can't be doing this. I'm on the road driving and I can't be having these episodes where I lose all my equilibrium. I can't be passing out at my job. And just like that, the migraine ceased. And I'm not saying that a symptom doesn't come back but I called on the name of Jesus. And that was the name that saved me. So that's why I continue to go to church and read more about the man that I call Jesus. And I remember just recently when I was having back issues and I couldn't walk and I was in a state of almost paralysis where I was unable to use my legs and I couldn't even stand up straight. They told me that I had a bulging disc on my nerve and it wasn't a weight issue, it was just a position of the bulge. And they said, look, man, you're just gonna need to have surgery to correct this issue. I got down on my knees again. And I said, God, I, I, I don't wanna be cut on because I, I see that everyone that goes through back surgeries, they seem to never be the same again. And I said, God, you're gonna have to Send somebody my way to help me. You're gonna to have to put me in a place where I can be taken care of because first of all, I'm way too young to be having surgery and, and not to be the same again. And guess what? The bulge was gone. The bulge and the pain and the nerve issues began to cease when I called on the name of the man that saved me. So I go to church and I continue to study and I continue to read my Bible because this is the only name that I've ever called on when I was in trouble. But I don't always call on him when I'm in trouble. When I open up my eyes in the morning, I make it a point to say, God, thank you for allowing me to see this day. And when I get a meal, I make it a point to say, God, thank you for this food, for the nourishment of my body. And when I get to work safely, I say, God, thank you for taking me across these dangerous highways. So I don't just call on Jesus when I'm in trouble. I call on him all the time. I call on him every day. I wanna make sure that I spend time with the man that saved me. I don't wanna be so common with God that I think that the activity of my limbs is just because I have cognitive thought and I can send a signal to my legs. I don't wanna be so common with God to think the reason why my eyes still can blink and my, and my eyes still can tear and, and I can still wave my hand is because I have the activity in my brain to, to send a nerve signal. I know that the ability to send that signal is because of the man above. I know that's why I'm able to move. I know that's why I'm able to actually speak. I know that's why I'm still able to speak. I know that's why I have the things that I have. It's because of God's grace. It's because of God's mercy that I have not been consumed. So I call on the name that saved me. I call on the name when the psychologist said, I can't really tell you what's wrong, 
you might want to pray. Now, how is it that you go to see a, doc a doctor and he tells you that he doesn't know what to do, that you might want to pray? And I'm thinking, I'm here seeing you because I don't know what to do. And the doctor tells me to call the best doctor. So I, I stay with the name that works. So I don't call on any other name. I don't, I don't profess to know what Allah and Buddha and Krishna, I, I don't know what that can do for you. I don't know what the chakras can do for you, but I know what God can do for you. I know what God has done for me. I'm reminded when I wanted to get my home, my first home, and they said that you are 22 years old, you're too young to be buying a single family home. But God did it for me. God gave me the ability and the wisdom to, to connect with the right people, to connect with the right people, to teach me how to manage my finances and gave me the ability to get a home at the age of 22, to build a home at the age of 22. And even the house that I'm in today, God made a way for me. And I remember when we went to look at this house and my ends didn't meet. I wrote some scriptures and I said, God, you're going to have to make a way. You're going to have to be the one to make my ends meet because you placed the desire of this home on my heart. And I would say, God, I'm going to have to get a raise. My wife's going to have to get a raise or they're going to have to give me some help because this is the home. This is the thing that I want. And I tell you, when I moved in there, I got a raise. My wife got a raise and they gave me some money back on that house. So I stay with the God, with the man that saved me. I stay with what works. So if it isn't broken, don't try to fix it. If it isn't broken, don't try to fix it. Stick with what works. And if you don't believe that this work, I challenge you to get into your word every single day. I label this why I go to church but the reality, we are the church. And you got to get in the word for yourself. You can't ride on the coattails of my messages or anybody else's message. You can't ride on the coattails of your pastor. You can't ride on the coattails of your significant other. You can't ride on the coattails of your parents. This is an individual affair. And the reason why it's an individual affair, because the spirit resides on the inside of you your body, and it's based on your personal relationship and your personal experiences. And you must get in your word more than just on Sunday, because on Sunday, you really are not getting in your word. On Sunday, what you are being, you're being evangelized to. You're being uplifted. You're getting like, like uh, how can I say this? On Sunday, it's like a quick boost. You know when your cell phone battery is low? And, and you plug it in the charger just to get enough power so, so that the phone can turn on and you can use it. That's what Sunday is. Sunday is like jumper cables. That's a better thing. Sunday is like jumper cables. When, you, when your strength is low and you just need a little pep talk, you just need to get in the right atmosphere, you just need to be recharged again, you just need to be around a body believers, that's the purpose of Sundays. Sundays is just supposed to jumpstart you. You are supposed to sustain you. Hey, cousin, you are supposed to sustain you. Your pastor is not supposed to sustain you. Your spouse is not supposed to sustain you. The word of God is supposed to sustain you. It says that man shouldn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the only way that we are ever going to be able to sustain ourselves is to, to have a healthy diet of the word of God. So I stay with the word because it works for me. I stay with the word because it works for me. I don't know what those other guys can do. Cause like I said before, those other guys wasn't there when I was in trouble. That's not who I called on. So every morning when I look at my hands and I can use this finger that was cut off, I say, thank you, Jesus. Every morning that I look at this hand and this finger that was cut off and I still have use of it, it's a thank you, Jesus moment for me. 
because I was told that I wouldn't have that finger. I was told that I wouldn't have use of that hand. And that was experienced when I was a child. So I don't want to be like the children of Israel. And, and excuse me, but this broadcast has been back and forth. But I was talking about the children of Israel got so common with God that they couldn't see that the manna that was coming every day because it was coming every day consistently like clockwork and that their clothes wasn't wearing out. They got it twisted. And they thought that God brought them into the desert to sustain us, to kill them. They thought Moses brought them into the desert so that they, that they could die. The reality was that God was sustaining them every single day and that the, the miracle of food falling from the sky and a cloud covering them from the heat and fire coming down to provide them sunlight. They got so used to it that they thought that they didn't need God. Don't get so used to having the activity of your limbs, to having the, the ability to speak, to have the ability to actually go to the restroom on your own, to have the ability to actually walk, talk, blink, hear. Don't get so common that you don't think that it is God that is doing that. That it is God that is doing that. I had a dear friend of mine who had somebody who had a stroke. Their brother-in-law had a stroke. No longer have activities of those limbs. So don't tell me that because you have activities of your limbs today, that you have activity of your limbs tomorrow. And this is not to put fear in your heart. But just two days ago, a family was driving down the road. And everybody got killed except one person. So every time you get down, back and forth, travel back and forth across the highways, remember it is God that is diverting those, those accidents from you. Don't get so common with God that you think that you don't need God. That's why I say I'm going to stick with what works. Because I know that the reason I drive on some of the most dangerous highways in this on the planet. And I don't have I don't I don't have a history of accidents. I'm not saying I've never been in one, but I don't have a, a history of accidents. Almost every day I drive and I see somebody broken over on the side of the road, broke down, or I see an accident almost every day. And I don't want to get so common with God that I forget that it is he that allows me to traverse up and down these highways safely. It is he that allows me to travel up and down these highways safely. So I go to church because Jesus works for me. Jesus is the name that I called on every time when I was in trouble. At my birth, my mom called on Jesus. When my finger was cut off, my mom called on Jesus. I called on Jesus. When I was told that I was going to have to have my ankle surgery, I called on Jesus. When I had my hip surgery and they told me that I could never walk again, I, have, I called on the name of Jesus. When they told me that I needed back surgery, and they said that I would, I would never be able to be normal again. I called on the Jesus and I didn't have to have natural surgery. I just had spiritual surgery done on my body. So I stick with what works. I'm just going to stick with what work. Every obstacle that I've ever faced in my life, when they said that it was impossible, I called on Jesus and he, he, he helped me see a plan. He helped me see a plan where I could see a way out. Once I was able to calm down and to calm my fears and feed my faith, I was actually able to see a plan to find my way out. Many times we can't see our way out because we are feeding our fears and not our faith. We are feeding our fears and not our faith. In the book of Samuels, there was a guy by the name of Nahash and he had cut a deal with the children of Israel one of the tribes. And he said, look, I will lead you, but the only way that I'm going to lead you, I need to cut out one of your eyes. Could you imagine making a deal with somebody, but the, but the cost was to cut out your eyes. That is going to prohibit your ability to see. 
The reason why I bring up that story is because your enemy will want to cut out one of your eyes. He wants to make you de dependent on his sight and not your sight. And really, we don't walk by anybody's sight but God's sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. The enemy will poke out your eye and parade you around because you serve him. Don't trade your Lord for an earthly king. Don't trade your God for an earthly king. And how do I know what's your Lord? Because it's where your loyalties lie. It's the thing that occupies the most of your time. It's the thing that you would want to go to more than the God that you serve. That thing is becoming your Lord and you don't even realize it. I want you to get into your word every single day. Don't get into it because I say it. I just hope and pray that God gives you a, a hunger and a thirst and a desire to want to know more. Don't just pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge under the, under the guidance of Christ. Because knowledge without Christ is dangerous. Knowledge without Christ is dangerous. And you can get into all kind of crazy stuff. Because a lot of people out there are saying that they are God. And saying that they know it all. I know that I don't know it all. I know that I'm infallible. I know that I'm not perfect. But I know someone that is perfect. I know someone that is infallible. I know someone that will sustain you. I know someone that will keep you. I know someone that will heal you. I know someone that will protect you. I know someone that will guide, guide you. I know someone that will wipe your tears. I know someone that will comfort you. I know someone that would actually send somebody to hold you in the midnight hour. So that's why I serve God. That's why I call on Jesus. That's why I stay, stay with Jesus. Because that's the only name that I've ever used to save me. That's the only name that I've ever called on that kept me. So I go to church because if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. And I know grammatically if it isn't broke, don't try to fix it. But if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. I stay with what works. So I call on Jesus because he's my king. He's the only one that I ever called on that actually answered. He's the only one that I ever called on that actually answered. So I, I just try to be a source of encouragement. And I want to challenge you to get into your word. Just pray. And if you pick up the word and you automatically fall asleep, just know that that's your enemy. It's not that the word is not interesting. It's just that your enemy is not interested in you having the word because it's the word that you know, the word that you can recall at will. That's the thing that the devil can't take from you. The word that you can recall at will is the word that the devil can't take from you. The word that you can recall at will will be the word that you'll be able to stand on. The word that you can recall at will will be, be the thing that you can, can rise up and say to your enemies, God is able. The word that you can recall at the will, at will, is the word that when someone says you're in a hopeless situation, you can say, if I can call on Jesus, it's not a hopeless situation. The word that you can recall at will, when you're in an accident and troubles come and you win what we call the fiery furnace. You can call on Jesus. And your, your, your adversary will say, I see another one in there. The people will say, why does he keep smiling? Why he keep raising his hand? Why didn't he quit yet? Why hasn't he given up? Why hasn't he surrendered? Because it's the word that you can recall at will. It's the word that you hide in your heart that you might not sin against God. It's the word that you know without your phone app. That word, that's the place that you need to be in. That's when you get to that statement that I know, that I know, that I know. That's where you want to be. If, if you could be in a place where things cannot control you, you can control them. 
that's really when you're in a great, great place. Many of us give people too much power over our lives. We allow them too much, what I like to call mental real estate. So someone can say one bad thing to you and it control the rest of your day. Someone can cut you off in traffic and that can control the course of your day. You gotta learn to not let things and situations move you. You gotta learn to not let people have the mental real estate in your life. And the way that you're able to do that is when you know who your savior is, it's when you know who your redeemer is, it's when you know where your joy comes from, it's when you know who actually healed your body. Because the doctor can say anything that they want to say, but God has the final say. I've said this often. Faith doesn't deny the facts. Faith denies the power of the facts. I don't know any name higher than his name. Again, I'm not going to argue if there was any J's in the Bible. I'm not going to argue that. I didn't call on Yeshua to save me. I called on Jesus to save me. So I'm going to stick with what works. Again, Facebook, the internet connection was acting crazy today. But if this message blessed you, I encourage you to, to share it out. But I go to church because I'm going to honor the man that saved me when I was in trouble. I'm going to honor the man that sent me help when I needed it. I'm going to honor the man that gives me sleep, sweet sleep at night. And if you have any troubles or any areas in your life, I want you to encourage you to find a place where your soul can be fed to get what I like to call soul hydration. You need to get some soul hydration in your life because the reason why you're struggling is because your soul is dehydrated. And once a week for two hours on Sunday, it's not enough hydration. You see how hot it is out here? If you don't put any water on your grass, your grass is gonna die. If you don't put any word in your life, as how hot the world is, with all the turmoil that we see in the world, with all the conflict that we see in the world, the only way that I know for you to hold your peace is to know the peace giver. The only way I know for you to hold your peace is to get with the peace giver. The only way I know for you to keep your joy is to stay with the joy giver. The only way I know for you to keep loving is to stay with the person that is love. The only way that I know for you to keep giving is to stay with the person that gives seed to the sower. The only way to keep the storms out of your life is to stay with the man that had the ability to speak to the storm and to rebuke it. You got to stay with what works. I stand on a more sure word of prophecy, and that is his, and that is his word. I stay with what works for me. I just stay with what works for me. I don't know I don't know what works for you, but I know what works for me. So I just thank God because God keeps on doing great things for me. Even when my blinded eyes can't see, God keeps on doing great things for me because God truly is the lover of our souls. He is the lover of our souls. So God bless you. Let's bless you. Share it out. I thank you for everybody that joined in. I thank you for those that stuck with me through multiple attempts to, to talk about this subject. But just, just get in the place. There is no place, there is no place that I'd rather be than to be in the arms of a loving Savior. There is no place that I would rather be. Because remember, hurt people hurt people. It don't matter if it's in a church building, if it's in a parking lot, if it's in Walmart, if it's in Target, if it's in a hospital, hurt people will hurt people because they're hurt. If you want to have less hurt in your life, get more love in your life. God doesn't have love. 
because he is love. And the greatest commandment that he said is love God with all your heart. And the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. This is Michael Gibson. That's why I go to church. Stay blessed.